right now, I think I'm just the only one. But I'm gonna okay. start. Okay, that's good. This way. Do I look? Do I sound okay? Is my audio okay? You sound yeah, man. You sound good. Okay. You sound cool. good. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Want, want to make Wait, sure last, we're good. Is this is this live or is this recorded? We're live. We're live. We're live. Yo, what's up? What's up, Facebook family? Want to invite you guys to come on. If you're around, want to invite you. I got a very special um, guest today uh, where I got my brother, Barone Savori. He's going to come on and we're going to talk just a little bit about all things church, how we can win um, in 2020. And so I want to give you a chance. I see you guys coming on. Yo, glad that you're here. Come through, come through. Yo, as many of you all know, I have been really just passionate and adamant about helping our churches win. You know, I'm all about vision clarity, literally all about vision clarity. And I want our churches to um, have vision. I've worked with enough churches throughout North America and I've pastored enough churches. I've, this is my fifth church, almost sixth church pastory. So I've pastored enough churches over the last 14, almost 15 years of my ministry. And I've realized that one of the major challenges that we experience um, as, a, as a church is just a lack of vision. It's not that we don't have good programs. It's not that we don't have good people. It's not that we don't have good pastors. A lot of it is there is just not a, a, a comprehensive vision that unifies the entire church and brings us all under together. And so for the last, what, four, five, maybe six years, I have been on a personal crusade to bring vision clarity to churches all across North America. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to pastor a church at the same time in Orange County where I can bring vision clarity to my own church and then take some of the things that I've learned working with my church and share them with other churches. I've worked with churches from New York to, to, to Atlanta, to Houston, um, to Cleveland, Ohio, all across to Memphis, all across uh, the North America. And one of my friends is on with me now and he's just gonna come and we're gonna talk a little bit for about 20, 30 minutes or so, just kind of talk about what's going on with his church and what how he is positioning his church to win in 2020 and 2021 i was gonna say 2023 and 2021 and so i want to bring i want to bring my brother um barone on and let me see if i can get this uh this system working for us here we'll just go we'll go with it there it is yo so i want to bring my brother barone yo man what's up bro Hey, what's going on, Seth, man? What is happening, man? It's good to be here with you. And for all of those that are joining online, hey, what's up, everybody? Yo, man, I am so glad that you are here. Um, I, I want to say just a few things about you, Barone, that I have just come to appreciate. Now, I recognize that with every individual you have, when you look at someone, they are either, let me say it like this, when you look at someone, they are either a, a um, late adapter right? An average adapter or an early adapter. And as long as I've known you all the way back to seminary, this is like 2004 or five, right? All the way back to seminary, you have yeah. always been an early adapter. And I just appreciate that about you, man. Like when it comes to Apple products, you're going to be that first person in line, trying them out, testing it out. When it comes to software, when it comes to computers, when it comes to cameras, like you are that dude who you, yeah, you leap before you look. I'm that dude. I'm that late adapter. I'm always jumping in at the, uh, the tail end and almost miss the train. And so, bro, I just know that, you know, that's something I value of you. And I think that your church is... I can just look at your church online and see that that trait, that characteristic that you ex exhibit, I think has blessed and benefited your church because you guys are not slow to the draw, right? And you guys are jumping in and you're leading them, you're leading them well, and you're making changes. And obviously early adapters, there's some bumps in the road, but you're making it happen, man. So bro, I just wanna salute you, man, for your leadership and what you're doing. Yo, just tell the people a little bit about what church you're pastoring, how long you've been there, where it's located. Um, just kind of give us a, 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 a snapshot. Yeah, man. Well, well, thanks for that. Thanks for that, Seth. You know, being an early adopter, you learn a lot of things. You make some some mistakes along the way. I'll share one story and then I'll jump into where, where I'm at right now is uh, I remember when I was at Oakwood, 
I was doing my early adoption thing and there was something called mini disc that came out. I don't know if anybody remembers mini disc, but I literally say I was in college, remember, and I saved up like 300 bucks. I went out and bought a Sony mini disc. I was excited about it. About six months later, this little thing called the Apple iPod dropped. Okay. And mini disc was no more. It was completely no more. So uh, early adoption, it has its advantages. Certainly, uh, sometimes you learn a few lessons. It might cost you a few dollars, but it's always good to be on the cutting edge. So mm-hmm. uh, in February, I transferred uh, from the Mount Rubido Church to pastoring my own church in Rialto, California, called the Valley Fellowship SDA Church. I started on February the 22nd. By the third week that I was there, the pandemic had taken yep. over and the church doors were completely shut. And uh, so, I mean, I barely knew all of my head elders names. I didn't know what they all looked like. I hadn't met all my members. Uh, we hadn't even had the welcome dinner yet for me joining the church. And yet I was there, I was leading this congregation and the pandemic hit, which what at that time I believed, I said, well, three weeks, four weeks, everything will be done, it'll be over, and then we'll be back to church as usual. And of course, we know now that Mm -hmm. that was not the case at all. And so we had to learn really quickly and adapt very fast. There were some questions that I asked, you know, do you guys go live? Do you have a live stream? And at that point, they were just kind of taking the sermon and the message and posting it after the church service was over. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, that wasn't going to work in this climate. And maybe you were a part of a church because we're Mm -hmm. a small church. We're not a big church. I had come from a big church that had teams, had equipment, had gear, mm-hmm. all that type of mm-hmm. stuff. And now I'm coming to a small church that they're just they're just surviving, really. Mm-hmm. They're in that survival mode. That's where having conversations with you, Vision uh, 360 Clarity, would come in to come and help us. As a matter of fact, it's part of what the plan that we had for our church is to involve someone like you to help us strategize of what we would do in an in-person setting. But Mm -hmm. all of those plans needed to be scrapped when the pandemic hit. So now we're figuring out all sorts of new things with a small church, severely limited staff with uh, some limited knowledge about uh, technology and whatnot. And so everything went into overdrive. So ever since then, uh, there's some members in my church that I have never met before. I don't know Mm. what they look like. If they walked through and said, hey, I'm a member of the Valley Fellowship Church, I haven't seen them in person. But here's one of the creative things that we did that I'm so grateful for is mm-hmm. that we had some strong leaders that really encouraged members to kind of participate online. That's one of the visions that I put forward. I said, look, it's not going to be the Barone show. It's not going to be the pastor show. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to involve as many people as possible in the stream. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about what that journey has been like uh, for sure. to get more people involved. So that's that's a little bit about where I am, small church, Southern California, right there in Rialto, coming in, mm-hmm. uh, brand new location, limited, very limited uh, technological knowledge and information. But now I had to come in and set forth a vision. And uh, I look forward to sharing a bit more about what it is that we've done and, and what we look forward to doing not only from a technological standpoint, but also from a church vision uh, perspective. Bro, bro, when you say small church, like how small mm-hmm. is your church? Because I mean, there's levels. Like I pastor a church and we have four people, right? So that's right. like, <laughs> that's micro. That's, a, that's not even small, that's micro church, right? So I've been yeah. there before. When you say small church, like what exactly are you saying? So, uh, so in terms of attendance coming each and every week, um, maybe about 45 people. Okay. 45 okay. to 50 people, mostly older. Um, okay. So uh, when when I said things like, hey, guys, we're going to have prayer meeting on Zoom, everybody was like, what's that? You know, they mm. know they know teleconference.com. They, they can mm-hmm. dial in uh, an mm-hmm. 800 number with a code and be on the phone. When mm-hmm. I said click a link, they were like, in the beginning, I promise you, they were like, nah, Pastor, we're not doing that. Like, why mm-hmm. can't we just do the conference call phone thing i'm like no yeah we're not going to do that anymore this is where we are this is where we're going so it's about 45 50 people mostly older yeah so i just want to encourage somebody out there because um i mean i've watched your service if you've never checked out his service i would encourage you to just dump over to youtube type in valley fellowship sda you'll see his services there and they are well done well almost like professional grade like it's legit like you have a very high quality service man so i want to commend you for that 
and yet you have a church of 40 people. And the reality is, is that most, and speaking to my, to my current faith tradition within the Adventist context, most of our churches are small, right? Like you don't have right. these mega right. church Adventist churches. I mean, you know, the larger ones in person, you might have one that's like five, 600 people. You know, you get around Oakwood, obviously they got a couple thousand. You get around Atlanta, right. they, you know, Atlanta Berean might have a couple thousand. DC, right. Maryland area has these larger churches. But most right. of the churches throughout North American division are smaller between 50 to, I would say 200, 250. Right. Mm -hmm. I pastor a church in Orange County. We have about 130, 150 on a good day. Right. And so they're they're smaller mm -hmm. churches. And so you have been able to take a small, small church with, you know, 40 people and you've been able to transition them online and you've been able to do it with high quality. I'm just curious. Um, what what did you have? What did you have? What didn't you have? prior to COVID? Like, did you have the cameras? I mean, I'm looking at your setup now, bro, and it's sweet. Like, you're, you're, I thought I had a decent camera setup, man, but you're like, I need to go back to the drawing board on this joint. Like, 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 Kimon already put it up there. Like, yo, man, your, your stuff, your stuff is legit, bro. Like, it, it looks good. So when you think about, about your church, like, what did you guys have? Did you guys have cameras? Did you have Canons or DSLRs or Sonys or, what did you have or didn't you have prior to prior to COVID actually hitting? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So inside the church building itself, um, because most small churches, one of the greatest thing, one of the biggest challenges you have is volunteers. If you have mm -hmm. these great mm -hmm. cameras, who's going to actually man them and take the time to learn yep. them each and every week? Like that's hard to do. And so a lot of churches are making a decision that my church did. Uh, but prior to, to when I came, which is they have these robo cameras, what they call uh, PTZs, pan, tilt, zoom. That's what PTZ stands for. And they mm -hmm. have three of them set up. Really, one person can operate them and kind of do the switching. And so they had those installed there in the church. Now, you know, they made some decisions about the cameras and the quality and all these different types of things prior to me coming. But they were set up to be able to record services, which was good, which was really mm -hmm. good. The only thing is that when the church is shut down and you can't mm -hmm. get together, now you have to really make some adjustments. Like, how are you actually going to get that done? Because a PTZ camera is really stationary. Mm -hmm. So I would say to churches that as you're looking toward this, that, you know, PTZs are a good way to go. You want to look at the quality of it. You want to future proof yourself. And so don't be afraid, hear me, don't be afraid to spend some money on the technology mm -hmm. that you're going to need, because now that is not the side door or the back yep. door. It's the yep. front door. Yep. It is the front door of what you're doing. So don't play around with that and get some really good consultation. So yep. we had those, but I, when I came in, I said, look, we're not going to be able to do that. The quality was not really what I wanted to. And so the first, what, what, I, what I wanted to uh, put out for Valley Fellowship. So now what I really wanted to do was to say, what is the quality that I want and how do I get there? Mm -hmm. I made a ton of mistakes along the way. So those of you all that are trying to figure these things out, I trust me, I was trying to figure out like Facebook, you can go live right away. YouTube, you get your channel, you're gonna have to wait 24 hours to get your account verified before you go live. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, you're not just gonna be able to pop out your phone and go live right away because you need a thousand subscribers to even go live on your phone. So some mm. people are like, why can I do that on Facebook? I can't do that on YouTube. Well, guess what? That's not going to be the case because Facebook and YouTube, though they're very popular, they operate very differently. Mm -hmm. Your older members are gonna be on YouTube because it's just go to the YouTube page, click the thumbnail and yeah. it plays. Facebook, gotta go in, search, have an account, all these different types of things. So. I found out that YouTube was a lot better for my older congregation. Facebook is something that my younger members, surprisingly, my younger members are going to be able to use. But but that that that's just kind of a sidebar. I don't want to get too distracted. Yeah. I had a camera, I had a Sony camera, uh, Alpha 6400 that I already had that I used uh, primarily, which I do 90% of what you'll see from Valley's uh, website, from the messages, the sermons, uh, to the music. Uh, most of the things that's what I use. I had a ring light, okay, which I would give advice on now, uh, moving forward. I had a ring light coming in, I had my camera, and then here's the most important thing 
I had a passion to do it well and to do it right. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how much time I spent on YouTube mm -hmm. looking up different things to try to improve myself. But because I took it, I made it personal because now this is the front door. So if I'm going to communicate the gospel well as a pastor, mm -hmm. I need to put some time in to say, mm -hmm. how do I do this well and how did I do it right? And guess what? Even now, I'm still spending time yeah. learning and growing each and every time because guess what it's not i'm not where i was seven months ago mm -hmm. i'm at this point guess what where i'm going next that's where i want to go but here's the th here's i'll say this seth is that you see all this now and i'm really wanting to to pour into somebody that says this is intimidating this is hard this is difficult you can do it mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of work patience but i came in with very limited basic things it's going to cost a little bit of money to get in, but mm -hmm. the end product you're going to really be happy with. Yo, man, that's a good word, man. Just give, you want to give a shout out to, to Juice, to all those who know who Juice is, Julian Johnson. You I know, he, shot, he shouted you out, man. He said, Barone is the best in the business. That is facts. You know, Barone is legit, man. Real talk. Julian and I were actually in Mississippi together. You know, he was my partner in crime down there in the SIP, man. He, uh, he, he held my hand, right? Started in Mississippi, man. I didn't know what to do. He was there. Him and Melissa were there, and they they walked me through, man. So I, I got a I got a lot of love for Julian. What's up, Derek, man? Yeah. So glad that you're uh, that you're watching with us, Derek Williams, my 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 dude from from Peterson Warren back in the day. So man, so so thank you for just kind of giving us a rundown, and I just want to give a shout out to, or really just put a plug in that if you are in a position where you're trying to, if you're still trying to figure out this camera thing, like I feel like a lot of people by now probably have figured it out, right? But if you have not figured it out, if you're still, you know, setting up, you know, from your bedroom just with your your laptop camera, and you want to take it up a level, I would encourage you to hit Barone up right like drop him in, in his dms on facebook find him on instagram yeah. i know at one point b you were i feel like at one point you had some type of service you were providing people to kind of like tutorial yeah. coaching mm -hmm. kind of walking them through so i don't know if that's still available but if there's someone who's watching right now and you're like you know what i love barone setup i need i need a, a, a dummy version a dummy proof version of what he got going on so i can take my stuff to the next level don't hesitate to to reach out to him <clears throat> excuse me don't hesitate to reach out to him um, so that he can, um, you know, hopefully just just walk you through. There might be a little cost to that, but uh, it's all good, right? You got to make an investment. So, so I want to talk with you. I want to sh shift and transition, man. Talk to me just a little bit about 2021, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about your church, clearly we're still online. You know, um, have you started already talking to your leaders, to your board, to your elders about 2021? If so, what are you thinking? Do you have a vision, a theme for the year? Do you have a focus, some goals that you've already set? Talk to me just a little bit about what that looks like for you guys. Yeah, so, you know, we're heading into our year end meetings and there's some big things. I, I, I'll kind of reflect back a little bit and then mm -hmm. then kind of move forward. One of the things that we did early is that a small church only has a limited amount of energy. Where are you going to spend it? So, mm -hmm. so a number of months ago, what we decided to do was to say, hey, look, things aren't getting better in terms of this, this crisis that we're all in. So we're going to choose. We're going to vote to just say, hey, look, we're going to close down to the end of the year. Now, that did one mm -hmm. key thing for us is that we no longer were spending energy on getting sanitizer and and all these other things to prep for people coming in because we already had decided that, look, we're going to be online. And then it shifted our mindset to what's important now, which is like a wind wheel. And mm. it says, what's most important now? How we communicate to people online is important now. So we began to make some real, real energy, put some real energy behind our online uh, preparation, our online uh, viewership and all those different types of things. So as we look forward, we're saying, okay, we're in December now, we're not gonna be opening in January. We're, we're gonna revisit that issue. And I would encourage anyone as they're going into 2021, depending on where you live, it might be a little bit more relaxed than it is here in California. But to make this, some decisions, which would allow you to be able to reposition people to say, hey, look, I really need for you to just kind of be a person that's gonna log, that's gonna be paying attention to what's happening online, what's going on there, 
how we're going to minister to people. So there's so there's three things that we've kind of decided to do. Mm-hmm. One is enter into conversations about church itself. Are mm-hmm. we going to continue to meet each and every week? Is that something that we need to do every single Sabbath mm. at 11 o'clock? You mean like meet as in meet as in online meet or just in person meet? In, 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 in person. So as we're okay. planning 2021, we're saying, let's spend a little bit of energy about how we are going to come out of it. Okay. We are kind of... We've kind of focused in and we've kind of nailed in and said, okay, this is who we're going to be. There's some improvements that we're going to make in terms of our online presence. Yeah. But what is it that we're going to kind of think about in terms of that? In the meantime, here's where we're bridging the gap. We're saying we're going to do some drive-in services. Now, in California, that's a bit easier to do than it is going to be in, say, Maryland New York. or You're right. New York, places right. like that. Right. So The parking, the parking is- in New York is just non-existent oh, it doesn't exist. <laughs> there were pastors that i said built in money each and every month just for parking yep. tickets because you just yep. say, hey look i'm getting one today you know yeah yeah the time, the time is more valuable than the ticket itself so you know that's just what it's going to be uh, so we've kind of started thinking about that and then we really gonna gonna really bump up our next level which is to say we're in a community and community service or community offerings have been anemic in our church. What can we do now to intentionally really reach out to the community? So right now we're currently handing out food uh, on a a bi-monthly basis. That's something that's gonna continue to expand. But now we've also partnered with our local university. I'm blessed Mm -hmm. to be close to Loma Linda University. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be leaning in heavily with that. We Mm -hmm. know that online there's tons of opportunities for people to be able to meet and gather in a place that's not as intimidating as actually having to show up to a building. So we can do some classes, inform our community, educate mm-hmm. them and give them friends. The that's other good. thing is our, our church as well is saying, hey, man, what a blessing it is to actually be virtual and have people really be able to key in on it. So we said, what is one of the gaps that's missing as it relates to things of social justice and stuff like that? Now, I know that there's a ton of things online, Mm -hmm. panels and all these different types of things, but it also opens up an opportunity. We can interact with some of the best minds across the nation Mm -hmm. at a minimal cost. And this is one of the things that any church can do. Mm -hmm. Find an expert, find an educator, find someone that's doing it well, bring them into your church and 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 have them share with your church body but that leads me Mm -hmm. to the to the third thing that that we've done seth we've chosen to do and that is not to do it alone we're not going to do church alone Mm -hmm. we're going to collaborate with our other brother and sister churches Mm -hmm. i just had a chance you were a part of it others were a part of it we did something on the west coast it was it was great to be a part of it and if there's anything that we're going to do more in 2021 Mm -hmm. it's not do alone that's good island yeah go ahead i mean i mean that's that's good i you know i saw a post someone put up i think it may have been pastor i think it may have been lola moore who put up a post Mm -hmm. uh and this was probably a month ago and she just made the observation that you know if you go on facebook or youtube on a saturday morning that's when our services are you'll see a number of churches and they're like you know one church has 30 one church has 15 one church has 20. like you see these these very low viewership you know numbers and then you'll go to like you know some other churches like oakwood or some others and they'll be in the thousands right and so it's like man a lot of us are just struggling you know a lot of our smaller churches we're struggling just to just to crack 50, just to crack 100 views, you know, why can't we partner together? That was a question that she posed. Why can't we partner together? And so I'm glad to know, I mean, I've seen you've been, do, you've been doing it just on your prayer meeting. I know you and two other churches collaborate and you guys do prayer meeting together. Wow. Like you said, we had the West Coast collaboration where I think there were like 12 of us, 12 mm-hmm. churches that partnered together to have a worship service. And it was kind of like a joint. I mean, honestly, because of technology, there's really no reason why we can't do more of this right right? and so what i hear you saying is that going into this new year that collaboration is going to be a part of the monthly or at least quarterly rhythm if not weekly rhythm of your church right where you are where you're collaborating with other churches so that's good absolutely that's that's good you know what seth you know and here's the thing about it is that it was an issue before the pandemic even hit yeah like so many churches were islands and yep. you're huddled you're huddled up here and ministry is hard mm-hmm. already 
-hmm. when it's just when yep. you just have your your small group why not lean into churches that are doing things well that you can learn from and grow from what is the it, it's competitive unnecessarily really yeah um when we can really come together and do things it's one of the best decisions i made mm -hmm. which was to partner with uh my local churches and say hey look we're here in the city i got my 20 you got your 25 you got your 15 let's just all come together let's come Why together not? Yep. And I mean, you have you have Ecamm that you can use. You have StreamYard. You have Restream. All of these things make it easy for you to mm -hmm. be able to bring and merge streams together and be able to send things out. And guess what? It's a whole lot less stress for you as a pastor and your yep. members will still get fed. I yep. promise you that. For sure. Just want to give a shout out to Asia. Thank you for watching. Um, glad that you're enjoying this conversation. You know, um, Barone, the one question that I have been posing to pastors that I've been working with them specifically as we get ready for 2021, I would love for you to answer it based off of your context, is what do when you go into when you think about this new year, when you think about 2021, what is it that you want for your people? Right. I want you to think about that question. What is it that you want for your people? Um, I, I launched a video series about a week or two ago. It's a three part series where I was walking churches through just kind of how they can really make this shift from 2020 to 2021. 2020 obviously was a year of disruption for us. So how can we leverage that disruption so that we can win in 2021? And that was that was kind of like one of the overarching questions is when you think about this new year, I want us to really take a step back and say, you know what, what is the one, maybe two things that we want for our people, right? A lot of times we, we want things from our people. So we want them to show up. We want them to give more. We want them to, to engage, right? So I, you know, and all of that has its place. But aside from that, what do we want for your people? So when you think about Valley Fellowship, what do you want for them in 2021? What do you feel like is the major thing standing on, December, was it December 30th, December 31st of 2021, looking back over the year, what do you want to be able to say, you know what, I'm so glad we did this because it did, it, it was like, it was like a, a lead domino or a silver bullet. Like we were able to really scratch where our people were itching. So that's the question. When you think about it, what do you want for your people this new year? Yeah. You know, for, for 2021 at the end of the day, I think that I want our members to become, um, to partner more with their own spiritual growth and realize their own power that they have as, mm -hmm. as members. So a lot of places are really pastoral heavy. Like if I don't have the pastor and the pastor plays a significant, very important role. So hear me, I'm not saying that pastors are insignificant, but what sure. I am saying is this is, uh, members are not as powerless as they may feel. So I want mm -hmm. them to feel empowered. The, mm -hmm. second, the second thing is that outside of this context where you have the trappings of church and you have all these different types of things, you need to really know what your gifting is and operate within that. I know that some things might be touch and, and visitation, other things like that, that uh, are just not possible, but I want for them to be able to find ways within their spiritual journey to be able to share that with the world and find their place in it now. More than ever, people are needing to uh, be able to pray and connect with others. They're willing to, to, to be able to, to, to use their music or whatever the case is. What, whatever their gifting is, now is a good time, isolated, kind of by yourself to say, what is my thing that I bring to the table and how can mm -hmm. I grow and build the kingdom of heaven? So I want for them to really lean into that without having the trappings of church to kind of hide all of the uh, hide behind all of those things to really 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 lean into that and That's then good. you know the third thing that i really want for them to really grow is to ha have a compassion for other people mm. i want their desire for being able to sow into to be able to support and learn to love people beyond themselves to grow now we're seeing more than ever people are losing jobs people don't have enough to eat, mm -hmm. people are mm -hmm. dealing with housing issues, we have uh, contentious and, and different things. I, I, you know, whether it's race, social justice, all these different areas where there is a lot of pain, a lot of challenge, I want for them to tap into that, not to just join in and to say that's bad, 
but be a part of solutions in their local communities where they live. Mm -hmm. I want for them agents of change where they are through the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Spirit. I just believe that when we begin to do that, that it changes neighborhoods, it changes homes, it changes churches, mm -hmm. it changes so much when people begin to engage other people with empathy, genuine concern, and genuine love. That's, that's, that's what it. I want for them. That's good. You know, I, I, I think when I whenever I work with a church, we always go in and we start talking about, you know, OK, what is your five year vision? Maybe 10 years, depending on how long the church has been around, how long the pastor has been there. But a lot of times we kind of stay within that five year time frame. Like, OK, where where do you see God moving you over the next five years? Right. And so we kind of start there and then we work our way backwards. OK, if this is where we want to be in five years. OK, what do we need to accomplish in three years? What's our one year goal? And then what do we need to be working on over the next 90 days? And that's kind of like the framework that I use when I work with churches. However, I think because of COVID and because there was so much disruption in 2020 and what disruption does is disruption leads to uncertainty, right? And so if you come in and let's say within your marriage and there's, you know, a disruption in your marriage, well, you're not sure, okay, what's it going to look like? Are we going to move forward? Are we not going to move forward? Let's get some counseling. And so because of that, there's disruption leads to uncertainty. And so because of the disruption of 2020, there's a lot of uncertainty going into 2021 and a lot of churches have not already taken the time to establish a very clear five year. Now, if your church has a five year vision already articulated, then what I really believe is that when it comes to disruption, disruption really doesn't change the, the, the big picture vision. Disruption changes the route that we take to reach that vision. So I think about my church, our five year vision was we wanted to bring life and power to 5,000 people within our radius. That was our vision that we articulated maybe two years ago. Well, COVID came, COVID doesn't change our vision. All COVID now does is tell us, well, we were going to do that through the traditional worship in-person service, in-person worship service, but we can't do it through in-person worship service. So now we have to figure out a way to bring in life and power to 5,000 people in our radius online, right? And we have to look at different routes to reach that five-year vision. However, if you don't have a long range, three year, five year, 10 year vision for your church, then as you think about 2021, you really want to think about, OK, what's the the visionary theme for this new year? Like, what's the theme? What's the what's the goal? What's the vision for just this one year? And I think that question is the perfect question to start that conversation with. If you're thinking about your your um having a meeting with your elders, having a meeting with your board, rather than thinking about it from a program perspective, like, okay, what are we gonna do for Pathfinders? What are we gonna do for worship service? What are we gonna do for prayer meeting? Those questions are necessary, but I think it's a little premature. It's almost like the tail wagging the dog. First start with the question, okay, when we think about 2021, what do we want for our people? And whatever the answer is, so you talked about we want we really want our people to to demonstrate compassion for the community. Okay, if that's what we want for our people, now what do we need to do to lead them to that point? Well, man, we probably need to have some sermon series about compassion. We probably need to have some compassion projects. Maybe we need to partner with some nonprofits that are already doing some compassion, some um, random acts of kindness. Maybe we need to partner with Compassion International. You're familiar with that, which is the, um, the, the like adopt a child, you know, um, organization. Maybe we should partner with Compassion International, right? How can we then leverage the programs and the sermons and the worship services to really drive home that one thing that we're shooting for, which is we want our people to be compassionate for the community, right? And so that one question, and this is just the one that I came with. I think there's other questions that you could ask, but that one question really gives a starting point for a conversation that can help shape that can help shape the, uh, the the landscape for 2021. And I think for a lot of pastors, what that also can do is it can really equip you to possibly later rest some of those ministries that you know need to be, I don't wanna say killed, but you know they need to be, you know, kind of put out to pasture for a little while. <laughs> they, need to be la they need to be laid aside, you know? And so how does, you know, and I'm just gonna use this, not saying it, it, it's a perfect fit, but how does Pathfinders actually help us lead our young people to experience more compassion, right? How does 
you know, pick a ministry, any of them. How does it help us, you know, lead our people to experience more compassion? If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, then we need to set it aside and we need to come up with something else that will actually help our people experience compassion, you know? You know, you know, you said you said something amazing right there, because sometimes and if you're a pastor out there that's watching or, or a leader or maybe you're even running your own home and you got a couple of kids running around crazy. Sometimes what's right in front of you at the moment is just mm -hmm. the biggest, most important thing. And you never get around to saying, what do I want six months from now? What do I want a year, three years or five years from now? And how do how do the decisions that I'm making in the moment impact? what will happen in the future and you know mm -hmm. Seth, this is what you do well this is what you do so well in mm -hmm. your in your clarity i've had a chance to go through uh, a series with you that was very mm -hmm. very very helpful it was clarifying we asked important questions that sometimes are not very comfortable but really mm -hmm. if you're going someplace you got to get a little uncomfortable yep. and um and i like that about it and those are those are the right questions to be asking not just from a church leader perspective, but from a personal perspective, from a home perspective, all of those things. If you're not clear about where you're really wanting to go, then yeah. there's no way that you'll get there. I mean, you'll hit the target all the time. Like, okay, I guess yeah. I, I won't sleep. I guess I ate food today, as opposed yep. to saying, I really want to lose 15 pounds. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like yep. that, makes, that makes big, big, big decisions. And so uh, I just want to affirm you and what it is that you're doing. Well, thank um, you, brother. Yeah, far beyond uh, this moment just here, just having to experience you and your leadership and how you've grown and what it is that you have to offer, it has been very helpful. And indeed, uh, it gets uncomfortable, brother. It yeah, it does. It is, and I'll be honest. Like I'm, I'm, like I'm not, I'm not preaching something. I'm not practicing. These are conversations I have with my staff, my team, my elders, my board, mm -hmm. on a regular basis, right? And so we are constantly. I mean, my team will tell you, like, oh, do we have to talk about the vision again? Like we're constantly having this conversation. We started talking about 2021 a couple about a month ago. What does it look like? We're, we've actually been reading this book. Um, you may be familiar with it. It's a great book by Jeff Henderson. Um, and it's called Know What You're For, right? And so this book has really started to kind of drive our conversation and our framework for this new year of 2021. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, write that down. yo, it's, 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 it's know what you're for. It's a great, it's a short, it's a great read. Um, and so, man, just, just, I, I want to encourage the pastors, the leaders out there, um, as you think about 2021, if you haven't already, it's not too late, really start thinking through those critical high level questions. It's very easy just to kind of hit the refresh button, refresh Pathfinders, refresh men's ministry, refresh women's ministry, refresh, you know, Adventist community services. Like it's that that's the easy route. But a lot of times that refresh button is not going to get you where you actually need to go. And so you have to take a step back and say, OK, where exactly do we need to go? Like, what exactly do we want for our people? Right. And now which of our current ministries will actually help us get there? Right. And Yo, know, and go ahead. As I think about that, I'll just I'll just throw this thing in there, too, is that um, when you begin to have conversations like this, what you have to what I began to admit to myself and others have to admit, you know what? We're not really good at this and we need mm. to ask help from somebody else mm -hmm. to help us get where we're going. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we're not good. Or For sure. That we don't. It just means that we're self enough aware as an organization or mm -hmm. as a person to be able to say, hey, look, I need your help. Or it's going to be better that we collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes we think like, oh, my goodness, we're this church. We should be able to figure that out. Or we should be able to do this. Or we should be able to do that. Uh, and sometimes that's not the case. And that's why sometimes making the phone call to say, hey, can you help me with this? Mm -hmm. um, or can we partner and do this together? Mm -hmm. Because I know that there's some pastors, some leader out there that is stressing themselves out mm -hmm. and they don't yep. have to do it. But they refuse to ask for just a little bit of help or just say, hey, look, man, let's come together. I'm not worried about, you know, all your members going over here and all the people going over there, whatever the case is. Right now, what's most important is that we meet the needs of our people 
and that we learn and that at the end of this we're all better for it yeah so, yo that's 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 facts man i i what two maybe two three days ago i had a conversation with with one of our colleagues wade ford and i was like bro like what are you doing with outreach you know, tell me, take take me in t under the hood of your church. You're, you're clearly, you know, killing the game when it comes to reaching the community. What are you doing? How are you doing? You know, and he was pouring into me. I want to bring him to my church to do a workshop or seminar. I've talked to other people like a Pierre Quinn about like, bro, can you help us do some team building stuff? So none of us are have it all right like we right. have to constantly right. lean on one another to help get where we're trying to go man so well yo man thank you for the time if you're watching or you're watching this live or maybe you're watching this you know a little bit later i want to encourage you just to jump over to my website if you're trying to plan for 2021 and you're like you know what i could use having a crucial conversation you know i've been preaching the same thing for a couple years now my leaders are just not getting it i need a fresh voice I would love to come alongside of you. I'm launching this ministry planning cohort. We're starting in just a few weeks. I would love for you to jump over to Vision Clarity 360. I'm gonna drop the link in the comments and you can go there, you can register. There is a cost, but it's an investment, right? And when you take your when you take your car to the mechanic, you don't expect them to do it for free. When you bring in someone to fix your roof, you don't expect them to do it for free. And so it's no different that God has given us gifts and we have to make an investment to really get our churches and to get our ministries where we wanna where we wanna go. Also just wanna give a plug to to Barone that if you're looking to try to increase your tech set up and you want to figure out what's the best equipment to buy what's the best systems to use you know um barone is the person to talk to he can definitely walk you through um for a fee maybe maybe not I'll let him work that out but there's definitely a way that he can come alongside of you and help you figure out where you're going and how you're going to get there as it pertains to your tech um he's he's legit in fact the system that we're using right now you know, I kind of put him onto it, but I never used it. And then he put me back onto it and has helped me kind of figure some things out. So listen, we need each other. Um, I think this is the we beauty do. of the body of Christ. Iron sharpens iron. And uh, and so listen, there's no reason why any of us can't be operating at a high level. So Barone, appreciate sure. you, fam. Yeah. And I should one more thing. 2021 uh, streaming pastor is going to be uh, what I'm going to be launching, consulting, helping people with that. So so hit me up for those that come in early. Uh, I'll have some discounts for you, but uh, Let's do it. I've gone through and learned, learned a lot of things. And Seth, thank you so much for having me with you, man. This has been great, man. We got to do this again. Yo, sometime. man, listen, for sure. I want to let people know I'm going to be on again tomorrow night with a dip tomorrow with a different pastor. And we're going to be talking about 2021, what their plans are, what they're doing, how they're going to do it. Any trials or or bumps that they've experienced so far so be sure to uh tune in and to just uh set a notification on my facebook page so that when we go live you'll you'll know we're up and you can jump on and participate in the conversation so thanks guys for watching have a great day peace